do you want to know what everyone else is saying about your video or any other YouTube videos? Do you want to know what most of the comments are saying? Are they mostly positive, negative or neutral comments? Right, today we will be building a solid JS sentiment analysis app right, using TensorFlow and Tailwind as well. So all the way from building it to deploying it on Vercel as well. So as you can see here, we have the app running. So this is what you will be building. So you can see that this app is already retrieving some comments from a random YouTube video. And you can see that it is it has rather performed sentiment analysis on the comments retrieve. As you can see, right, it says either neutral, positive, or negative, right? And the small image here changes according to that sentiment analysis. And you can also see that the app calculates an overall percentage positive, right? So this is a simple calculation based on how many positive comments there are out of all the comments retrieved. So for example, we can paste another YouTube video link here and the app that we will be building will retrieve the comments, perform sentiment analysis on the comments retrieve and once again do the calculation again and of course this random dog image will change accordingly right based on the percentage shown or calculated here right so without further ado let's jump right into building and deploying this app let's go all right first up we will have to create the solid js project directory so to start let's do mpx Thank you. So let uh, solid JS slash templates, and we'll use the TypeScript template, and we'll call this solid dash YouTube dash sentiment. All right. Now let's go into the directory that we just created. Okay. CD solid dash YouTube dash sentiment. And let's do a yarn so that we can install all the dependencies. All right, now that that is done, I've cleared the terminal window so that you can see what we are typing here. All right, so and let's do yarn start to start the server and we can see what it looks like right now. All right, so if we go to localhost 3000, right, you can see that we have created and it is up and running our empty brand new fresh out of the oven solid js app all right okay let's go back to our terminal okay let's stop the server okay let's clear again once again okay and we will have to install a few packages okay that we will need for our youtube sentiment analysis App. all right so let's do yarn at okay first up we need tensorflow okay tensorflow slash tfjs okay so we will be performing sentiment analysis uh by leveraging on tensorflow right so this is actually one of the most important packages that we need to install okay next we need solid query so this is essentially the solid js version of react query so if you do not know what react query is uh do search it up it's quite a good and useful package okay that you can use to do factors and mutations all right okay and next we need uh tailwind css okay and it's required packages as well so auto prefixer and post CSS. Okay, and next we also need the JS to do some simple, simple formatting for dates. Okay, and next we need motion. Okay, to do some simple animation as well for our solid JS sentiment analysis app. Yeah. 
And lastly, we need motion one slash solid, which is motion's way of providing animations for solid JS. All right. So this should take a while and we'll be right back. All right. And we are done installing all the packages that we just added. Okay. Next, okay, we will need to get and set up the YouTube data API, right? So that we can retrieve the comments for a video. All right. So without further ado, let's jump to the Google Cloud Console. All right. We have our Chrome here. Okay. So go to console.cloud.google.com. Okay. And if you're already logged in, you might see something similar to this. Okay, if not, uh, log into your Gmail or via your Gmail. Okay, and if you are not already in any projects, create a new one. Okay, using this uh, select project here. Okay, I, I've already created one. It's called Solid Sentiment. Right, so once you have come to this screen, right, use this search bar at the top. Okay, all right, hopefully you can see it now. Okay, so use this search bar at the top, right? Search for YouTube. Okay, and what we want is the date YouTube data API version three. And this is what you should see next. All right, so if you have not already previously enabled this API, okay, this will say enable instead of manage, right? So click on this button here. Okay, so you may or may not be required to enter your card details, but do not worry because uh, there's still a free tier for this, all right? Okay, so next, it is quite important, right? So in order for us to make full use of this API, okay, we will need to have the credentials, right? Essentially the API key, All right? So once you're on this tab here that says credentials, okay, you will find something along the top right corner that says either create credentials or generate credentials, All right? This is very important because you need this key to call this API, All right? And once you have generated your API key, Right, it will look something like this. Okay, copy it. All right, and just to demonstrate what kind of data we can retrieve from this YouTube data API. Okay, I'm using something called Postman here. So Postman's, Postman is something that you can use to uh, experiment and play around with various data endpoints, right? Modify your parameters and whatnot. Right, your method as well. Okay, so as you can see here, we have our YouTube data API here, right? And then we are just passing our API key. Okay. Okay, and we want the snippet. And this video ID is essentially just the ID of any YouTube video, right? Okay, so once we click on send, Right, Postman will retrieve the results from the YouTube API. And if you have your valid API key and this is set up properly, right, this is just the data, for example, what you will get, right? So for example, you can see that uh, we have snippet, okay, uh, an array of snippets in items, okay? And you can see, okay, what we want is the text. Right. So for example, it's midnight again and blah, blah, blah. And of course the author display name will help as well. Right. Same goes for the date published at or updated at. Right. So those are some of the information that we will need for our sentiment analysis solid JS app. All right, now that you have seen what kind of information or data that we are looking for from the YouTube data API, okay, let's go back to our app and configure 
the environment variable that we can use to fetch all this information. Let's go. All right, and now we are back in VS Code. So remember the solid JS app directory that we just created. Okay, so use VS Code to open that up, and you'll find that right solid JS has already generated a bunch of files for you. Okay, and of course the starting point for our app is as always app dot tsx. Right, let me just zoom in. So you can see what we are typing here. And as always, okay, I do always like to have the app running on the right of our VS code. So we can see immediately the changes made to the app. Right, so all right, to start things off, okay, we will need to create an env file, okay, as we have done so over here. Okay, this is where you should keep your important keys passwords and whatnot because okay it's always better to keep it in an env file okay for security reasons right so remember the api key for youtube that we have gotten just now copy and paste that over here okay and something to note here that is very very important okay so a difference from react js okay if you're coming from a react background is that for solid JS okay if you want to use the values in your env files okay and if you're using vite okay you need to prefix your variables or rather your environment variables with vite underscore all right uh, this will allow vite to pick this variable up all right next to prepare for our data fetching okay let's go to the source folder all right let's create the types right, since we are using typescript uh, let's create a new folder let's call this types all right and let's create a new file let's call this data types.ts okay so what we will be creating here or adding here will be the various types that we will need okay especially for when we are going to retrieve all the comments, all the comments, okay, for any YouTube video, right? So for example, okay, let's go back to Postman and let's take a look at what information we need to pass to the data, the YouTube data API. All right, we are back at Postman. So if you notice the keys, here right the values are here the three values okay so for this endpoint we need to pass in key okay uh, a part and a video id so these three keys can be just simple plain strings all right so we need to add those three or rather declare those three as strings in the types all right, so coming back to VS Code. Okay, so let's create the interface that we need for making that request to the YouTube API. So let's do export interface. Let's do get video comments request. Right, so the name of this doesn't actually matter. You can name it however you want. Okay, but here we need to pass in, remember we need a key. Right, we need a part that will be snippet and we need the video ID. Alright, so this is what we need to pass right to the request. Right, let's take a look at what we will get as the response. Right, so let's jump back to Postman. Alright, so we are back in Postman. So what we need are the comments, the text, right, in order for us for the app. To perform the sentiment analysis using TensorFlow. Okay, so we need all the comments itself, right, over here, right, which means we need this, which means we need this, and this, right. So it's essentially an array of this snippet, top level comment, and another snippet, and the text display, right. So we will need to create the interfaces for that 
as well. All right, let's go back to our data types dot ts. All right, so we are back in VS Code. So okay, we will need to define the interface for our response as well. Right, the counterpart to our request. So let's do that. Right, so get video comments response. All right. So even though there are other information or data returned in the response. Okay, we only care about the items, right? So the item itself will not just be a string, right? Which is why we need to define the interface for that as well. So let's call it, okay, I'm going to call it YouTube video. Oops. Yeah, I'm going to call it YouTube video comment. You can call it however you want, right? So items will be an array of YouTube video comments, right? Okay, so of course, okay, we still have an ID and remember we have a snippet, right? Okay, so once again, this of itself will not be a simple string as well. Let's call this YouTube video comment snippet. Okay, and the snippet here will be same thing, right? YouTube video comment snippet, right? So remember, okay, we are just following the format and structure of the data returned from the data the youtube data api right so here we have a video id okay we also have a top level comment if you remember right so this top level comment by itself is it also comprises of other stuff right so we will need another interface for that okay so let's call this youtube video top level comment all right so same thing here this will be youtube video top level comment all right and for this okay that's a that's an id all right there's also a snippet okay and once again this snippet is right it also has its own stuff right so let's create another interface for this Right, so even though this seems rather long winded, but I assure you it is necessary and good practice as well. All right. So once again, okay, this snippet will be YouTube comments snippet details. Okay, and lastly, this command details we have the original text, which is what we want the author display name okay we can also show this as well uh the publish at okay there are other information but we only are interested in this four pieces of information right let's save that all right now that we are done with that okay we're going to add a home screen right so instead of just doing everything at the root app component okay we're going to create a home screen to do that instead All right so under src where you can see on the left okay let's create a new folder let's call this screens and in screens we're going to do another folder let's call this home and in home we're going to create a new file called home screen dot tsx all right so for home screen, okay, you can see that I'm leveraging on code snippets that I have previously configured to save time. Okay, I will recommend, I mean, I heavily recommend you to do the same as well. Yeah, right. You can see how much time that save us, right? So we have our home screen component here. Okay, so let's replace this portion here with that. All right. All right, so what we're going to do here is we're just going to remove everything here, do a simple div, and we'll just plug in home screen. All right, notice how VS Code right adds this line for us, save. Okay, and on the right, okay, the app should update to say or to show a white screen. All right, so if I type anything here in our home screen component and save right it should appear here right this goes to show that solid js has added our home screen to the app right and it's displaying it all right 
Alright, so now that we have our home screen, okay, we will leave it empty for now. Okay, and now that we have our home screen and our data types, okay, we can move on to defining our factors, right, by leveraging on solid query. Right, so in our SRC folder, okay, we're gonna create a new subfolder. Let's call this factors. Oops, okay, that should be HES, all right. And we're going to create a new file called fetch video comments.tsx. All right. Okay, so same thing here. Let's create our component first. Okay, and for fetch video comments, okay, we will make full use of solid query so let's import that so before we even create the query in order to perform the fetch okay we need to create a store right for us to store the video id okay and there's a reason for that which we'll get into later in the video so stick around as usual right so once again under src okay we'll create a new folder a new folder called store and in store, we'll create a new file called store.tsx. All right, once again, I do have a code snippet prepared for creating a new store in SolidJS so that we can save time. Okay, so if I press tab now, right, notice that a lot of things just appear out of nowhere. All right, so for now, we'll just have this video ID, which is a string. Okay, uh, let's call this store. And we'll just have the video ID to have a default value of, okay, a random video ID, All right? Okay, and that's our store for now. All right, let's go back to our fetch video comments over here. All right, so before we create our query, we will need to form the request. So let's do constant request equals to request get video comments request right equals to so remember we need a part uh, we need a snippet okay we need the key right so remember how we mentioned that for vite okay we need to have the vite underscore prefix for your environment variables right so for vite instead of process.env which is what you might use with a uh, create react app right we'll use import.meta.env.vite underscore youtube data underscore key all right and for video id okay so this is where we'll pass in the store's video id right so okay let's move out of this okay we'll say use store over here go to store and let's have vs code import this for us and over here back to the video id we'll say store dot video id right and that's our request all right now that we have our request over here okay we'll also need to define the endpoint so that we can call it all right so let's do constant endpoints equals to uh, let's do get underscore video comments and we'll just copy the entire endpoint here without the parameters all right that should do it okay now that we have the endpoint and the request okay let's make our fetch or rather our query all right so constants query equals to let me just scroll this up create query okay and we'll define the response type here okay and okay first up we need to define a key so for solid query this is how you do it okay we have the key as comments all right and let's and next we need to define the fetch function all right so let's do it here return fetch okay uh, this is where we'll call our endpoints dot get video comments 
all right and then we'll pass in the key which is our api key so that will be request dot key okay and next we need our part so part equals to request dot part and lastly we need our video id okay with a big i and small d all right so this will be request dot video id yep okay and we'll do then okay and we get our response over here okay we'll say if response dot status is 200 okay we'll just return response.json all right if not that means okay we do not get any comments for or rather maybe we cannot find the video with that video id you just say throw an error right okay and lastly let do let's do a catch and we'll say throw new error error right okay and okay just to make sure that we do not do a refresh on when you are clicking back to the window okay we'll do refresh on window focus right so this is how you set up uh, options for solid query right so we are essentially saying or telling solid query to not perform the fetch again when you are focusing back again on the apps window all right okay and over here at the end we'll just return the query instead right so let's remove that return the query right so this is so that we can call this fetch anywhere all right and of course okay it's giving us an error because this is not actually a solid JS component right now that we are just returning the query right because of that okay we will need to remove this portion here and let's save all right let's go back to home screen okay and now let's add the fetch video comments to our home screen all right now that we're back in home screen okay we're going to create the query here by calling fetch video comments right so constant query equals to fetch video comments all right okay and there we go okay so to test out whether we are actually fetching anything at all okay we're going to use a simple switch tag that is provided by solid js uh, switch and match actually right so over here okay let's do switch and let's do match okay when query dot is fetching okay so this is when okay we are still in the middle of retrieving the data from youtube all right so for now we're just gonna say loading all right okay and let's do another match and this will be for when query dot is success all right and for this we will just say json dot string defy query dot data dot items all right and let's save this all right so after saving you might notice that on the right nothing is happening to our app right nothing is updated uh, most likely we have an error let's find out what that error is okay so let's change and take a look at our console right so you'll notice that it says that no query client set use query client provider to set one right this is because we have not set up the query client provider yet for solid query right so let's do that now all right let's go to index.tsx okay let's import 
Okay, we need both query client and query client provider. Okay, from ten stack solid query. All right, and we just need to create a new query client. Okay, and we need to pass this. Oops, all right, there should be a small queue. Okay, and we need to use okay, query client provider to wrap it around our app. All right, so this is client equals to query client. Okay, wrap it around our app. All right. Okay, save. And you will notice that on the right, okay, we have fetch some comments from our endpoint, right? This already goes to show that our fetching is working, right? Powered by solid query. All right. So now that we have retrieved the comments from the YouTube data API, okay, but you can see that it is obviously not very visually appealing to just display text in a white background so we will have to style it and display it nicely right in a list right so for that we will need to leverage on tailwind css right so let's get back to our terminal and configure tailwind for solid js all right now we are back in our terminal okay let's stop the server for now clear that all right so to set up tailwind which we have already installed let's do npx tailwind css init dash p all right give it a while okay that's done all right now we need to go back to our vs code to set up the configuration file for tailwind all right now that we are back in our vs code Okay, let's go to the Tailwind configuration file, which is tailwind.config.js, okay, which has been generated at the root directory here. Right, and under module.exports, right, and under content, okay, let's replace this with this, right? So basically telling Tailwind, okay, what kind of content we are going to use Tailwind for, right? Save that. All right, and we also need to add the Tailwind directives to our main CSS, which for us will be index.css, all right? So we need to add it at the top, okay? Uh, let's paste that, copy and paste that. Okay, so do not worry as once again, and as always, the code for this app will be available for free to you on GitHub. And as always, I will put the link to it in the pin command below all right so once that is safe let's go back to our terminal to run or start the server again all right and we're back in our terminal let's do a clear and let's start the server all right now that the server is running let's go back to our vs code all right and back in vs code to test if tailwind is working Let's go to our app.ts, okay? We can do class, okay? To test that Tailwind is working, you can do background or BG black, for example, right? Okay, so you can see that Tailwind is indeed working, right? Due to the background of the app becoming black on the right. All right, let's undo that uh, because obviously we do not want a black background, all right? Save. There we go. All right, now that we have set up Tailwind CSS, it's time for us to style our list of comments on the right. Right, so we are going to create another folder under SRC. Right, let's call it components. Okay, uh, let's create another subfolder under it. Let's call it command. And let's create a new component under the sub folder let's call it command.tsx right so this is the component that we will be using to 
display each and every component right that we have listed on the right right so once again let's do comment all right okay so firstly we need a few pieces of information from the list okay so we need the author right we need to display who commented right who wrote the comment okay we also need the comment itself the text and the date all right okay so for the dates we will need to format and display it nicely so for that we will need to import day.js as well all right okay all right and for now okay our command will be very simple okay let's do this okay to make some proper indentation all right Okay, so let's see. Our command should have a white background. Okay, so you know what? Okay, let's not do any styling for now and let's just display the information. Right, so for example, let's say if we want to display the text first, all right? Yeah, maybe the author as well. All right, uh, maybe we'll do this for now. Right, just to show what it looks like. Okay, save that. Okay, let's go back to our home screen. All right, so now we're back in our home screen. So instead of doing this, let's remove that. Okay, and we're gonna use for, right, provided by SolidJS, right? So this is excellent for displaying list of items, right? So for each, query dot data dot items all right okay and of course we need to import it from solid js all right okay we'll say item right which is a youtube okay remember we created this previously right index right in our data types file all right okay over here we will bring in our command file all right uh, let's do this okay and of course we need a curly bracket here yep okay and of course we need to import this from our data types all right so for our command we need three pieces of information so first up we need the author right so for author there will be item dot snippet dot top level comment dot snippet dot author display name and next we need the command itself so that will be text item dot snippet dot top level command dot snippet dot text original right and lastly the date itself right so item dot snippet dot top level command dot snippet and dot let's do update that all right all right and let's make sure that we import comment Okay, the new component that we have just created as well. Yeah. Okay, and the error is gone. Okay, let's save this and see. And let's see what happens to the list on the right. Right, so now at the very minimum, there are no curly brackets appearing as part of a JSON. Okay, we can see that we have the author. Okay, we also have the comments here. Okay, so let's go back to our comments component. All right, now let's do some proper styling so that we can have the comments ap appearing nicely. All right, so first up, let's do class, a white background, a blue border. Let's do blue 400. Okay, and let's decrease the opacity of the border let's say 10 percent okay and we only want a border at the bottom so border dash b and maybe some padding in between all right uh, what else do we need we need flex and column right flex direction to be column right let's save and see what happens right so now notice on the right okay there are some spacing and a very light border at the bottom between each and every comment all right 
All right. So now we want to display the author and the date nicely. So let's style that as well using Tailwind CSS. So let's do uh, flex and flex row, right? Because we want the date to appear to the right of the author. All right. So let's do this for the author first. All right. Okay, so for the author, okay, we'll do a left align. Uh, we'll do a font medium. Okay, so that is for font weight. All right. Uh, let's close this div. Okay, now we want to display the date. Okay, when this command was updated at or last updated at. Okay, we're going to change the color of the date itself. We're going to make it smaller text xs maybe some spacing from the author itself all right and okay we are going to use day js to format the date all right so let's do day js bracket props dot date bracket dot format all right and we're going to do day month and year in four digits, all right? And maybe the hours and minutes, all right? So let's do space hours, single digit, minutes, double digits, and maybe AM or PM, all right? And let's close that curly bracket. All right, let's save and see what happens to our command list. Right, there we go. You can see that okay, we have our author appearing nicely here. Same goes for our date appearing to the right of our author itself. All right. Right now we want to style okay the comment itself. Okay, so let's do that. Okay, so once again div class. Okay, and we want to align the text to the left. Okay, we want it to be slightly lighter in terms of font weight as compared to the to the author's name. Okay, we don't want the text to be so big. So text SM and maybe some spacing from the author's name and the date. All right. Okay, so let's move this and remove these comments because okay, we don't need to say that and save. Right, so now it looks much cleaner. Okay, if you look at here on the right. Okay, there's more spacing between the comment and the author itself. All right, now that we have styled the comment component using Tailwind. Okay, but you might notice that each and every comment here on the right. Okay, it seems quite near to the left and right edges right so let's go back to home screen okay and okay to our root div here let's do class equals to let's do some padding along the x axis so let's save that and you can see now it's much much cleaner all right now before we move on to the sentiment analysis part of the app Okay, we will need to copy and paste some images that we will be using for the app. Right, so let's go to the root directory. Let's create a new folder. Let's call this public. Right, so this is where the app will search for our images as well. So let's do public assets. And under assets, let's do images. All right, and you can see that we have pasted some random dog images here. All right, so this happy image, happy image of a dog will be shown when we have a positive comment. And this is for a neutral comment. This is for a sad comment. And lastly, this is for when our fetch returns an error or no comments, right, for any YouTube video link. All right, let's move on to 
adding TensorFlow to the app. Okay, as mentioned previously. Okay, let's go back to our home screen. Okay, we will we'll have to import TensorFlow. So let's do import asterisk stf from at tensorflow slash tfjs right so this is what we will be using right to perform our sentiment analysis right and of course we would need a model okay for that okay so we will okay, leverage on models right the sentiment analysis model provided by google okay over here so you can see this cnn underscore version one okay is the model that we will be using to perform and predict for sentiment analysis on all the comments that have been retrieved right so that is the link for our model okay and this is the link for the meta data which essentially will map each and every character or word or phrase of the comment to a number okay, which is required for tensorflow to perform the sentiment analysis right so this once again is provided by google as well all right next okay we will create our load model function okay we will need to use this to load the sentiment analysis model right so async function load model okay we will need to make it asynchronous because right it doesn't load instantly right it is asynchronous right so let's do a try catch okay okay a simple try catch and we'll lock any error or errors if there are any and let's do say constant model equals to await tensorflow dot load layers model right and we'll use the link from the url we have just added in so urls dot model okay and we'll do all right and we will save the model in a signal so let's use solid js create signal over here let's do model set model and the type will be any since this is a tensorflow model all right okay and over here we'll say set model model and let's do a console log to say model has loaded save that okay so we will call this load model method when our home screen is mounted all right so for that solid js does provide a on mount that we can use okay so let's put that after our load model so on mount okay we can say load model and save okay so let's check out our console okay by inspecting our app on the right and let's change this to bottom okay so if we check out our console here you can say that we can see that it says model has loaded right so this means that Okay, the app has loaded our TensorFlow model, all right? Okay, next we will need to load and save the metadata as well. So let's create another asynchronous function to load the metadata, all right? Same thing, we'll do a try catch, same thing. Okay, and we'll do a console log of the error if there are any, all right? Okay, and let's do constant meta data JSON. Goes to away. Let's fetch the URL dot meta data. Okay, and we will. Get the meta data JSON dot JSON, right? Okay, and once again, we will need to set the meta data in a signal as well right so that we can refer to it later on right so using solid js create signal once again metadata set meta data and it will be any 
right so set meta data and meta data all right so once again we will call the method or the function in on mount again right after load model all right and to show that metadata is retrieve okay we're just going to print it out all right metadata and save all right you can see that we have retrieved our metadata right if we look at the bottom right corner here in the console all right let's remove this console log and save all right so for now we do not need the console for now so let's hide that all right now that we have loaded the model okay let's go to our comments component right comment right and now we'll start to get to the sentiment analysis of the comment itself right so over here we're going to add a new function all right all right let's call this get sentiment score right and we'll pass in a text which is obviously going to be a string right so we're going to do some simple string operations on the text that is going to be passed in so constant trim equals to we're going to trim it okay we're going to make everything lowercase and we're going to replace random symbols right and remove them okay we are going to replace them with nothing okay and we're going to split them okay by their spaces right let's space that and save right so now that we have this stream text which is a string okay next we need to prepare a tensor right for tensor flow to work with right so before that we need to create a tensor buffer all right so do not worry if you are new to tensorflow and what tensors are okay we will try to go through each and every line as well so constant input buffer right equals to tensorflow tf dot buffer right so what tf dot buffer does is that it creates a tensorflow buffer right of a specific data type and of a certain row and column uh, length right so for example you want it to be a buffer of one column one row and five columns right so this is what you would do okay and we'll say the type will be float 32 for example right okay but instead of doing that okay we will not say five columns all right yeah we'll say props dot uh, okay, we will need to pass in the metadata here. So for now, let's say props dot metadata dot max length. All right. Okay, and of course you can see that we have an error here, so we need to import TensorFlow here as well in our comment component. All right. So let's do that. Okay, over here. So import asterisk as TensorFlow from at tensorflow slash tfjs save that all right and we need this metadata which we can get from our home screen all right so we're going to pass that in as well all right metadata okay and we are going to need the model as well right in order for us to perform the sentiment analysis of the comment all right let's save that all right so now that we have our buffer right our input buffer okay we will need to go through each and every trim word that we have processed okay two lines above okay let's do word and then index okay so we'll do input buffer dot set all right you can see that we are essentially just setting the value at a specific row and column index right so by now you might have guessed that a tensor tensorflow right requires you to prepare tensors for them right 
So you can essentially think of a tensor as a multi-dimensional array of a certain data type. Right, so for our case, it will be right a type of float32 tensor okay, with a row of one, a row length of one and column length of max length. Right, so that depends on how much data is in meta data. Right, this meta data that we pass in from the home screen. Right, right. So let's go back to setting our tensor buffer. Right, so that TensorFlow can work with it. Right, so we want to set the value first. So props dot metadata dot word. Right, underscore index, and we're passing the word itself. Right, okay. Plus props dot metadata dot index from. Okay, we'll do it at the first row and at a variable column. All right, save. All right, now that that is done. So remember that we mentioned that TensorFlow requires you to prepare tensors to work with, right? So now that we have already achieved that, okay, we can straight away say input equals to input buffer to tensor, right? Because we need to convert this tensor buffer to a tensor, right? So that TensorFlow can work with it, right? And using this input, we'll say constants predict out, right? The output from the model equals to props.model, right? This model will pass it in later from our home screen, right? So we'll say predict, right? Give us a prediction, right? Right, tell us what we get, what we can get, right? From doing a sentiment analysis prediction, right? So we're just passing in the input, which is our tensor here, to this model over here, right? To get a prediction, okay? Which will be here in predict out, all right? Right, and let's get the score, which will be dot data sync, right? And we're just saying we want the first result from it all right and since we do not need it after that okay after we have gotten the score we'll just say predict out dot dispose all right and we'll return the score save all right so now that we have added this method here get sentiment score all right okay we can add it to show okay at the bottom of the command body right so somewhere around here right so let's create a new div let's say uh, flex flex row okay we want things to display in a row maybe some spacing from the top all right okay let's say maybe some more spacing some spacing from the left Okay, some text size, uh, that'll be XS, my bad. And maybe we have the text in blue, say 800, all right, okay. And over here, we'll call the get sentiment score method, right? And we'll pass in the comments itself, right? The text body. Right, and let's save and see what happens on the right. Save. All right, so after refreshing, notice that okay, nothing is showing, and that is because we have not right gotten the model and metadata from the home screen. Right, so let's do that. Okay, so model equals to model. Right, metadata equals to meta data all right save and let's refresh right you can see on the right that right below each and every command there is a number appearing and that is the sentiment analysis all right so you can see that the first number starts at around 0 0.56 let me just increase the font size for you all right 0 0.5689 so that's around 56% positive. So I'll say this rather neutral, 
right? 0.99 is almost 100% positive. So for sure, this is positive, right? Uh, can we find something very low? Let's see, anything below, all right. Okay, so this is around 2% positive, right? So the model is saying that this is negative, right? Yeah. So instead of just displaying a number here that represents the sentiment analysis prediction, right? Let's let's change that to a descriptive word instead. All right. So in order to have that descriptive word, okay, let's go back to comment, all right? And we have to define the right the sentiment threshold, right? So let's say constant sentiment threshold. Okay, positive, uh, let's say 0 0.66, so that's around 66%. Neutral, let's put it at 0 0.33 maybe. Okay, we can change this later on. And negative will say zero, all right? Save that. Okay, and we're gonna add a new function to our command component, right? Let's call this function process text. Okay, once again, the text will be string, all right? Right, and let's say sentiment score equals to get sentiment score, all right? So we'll call the get sentiment score method here instead in our newly created process text function. Okay, and we'll say let sentiment word equals to, okay, empty string for now. Okay, and we'll say if sentiment score is greater than sentiment threshold dot positive. Okay, we'll just say sentiment word equals to positive. All right, so if not, else if it is greater than neutral. Okay, we'll say it is neutral. Right, quite straightforward. If not, right, if lastly, it will be negative, right? Pretty straightforward, yeah? Right, so sentiment word equals to negative. All right. Okay, and we're gonna save that sentiment word in a signal once again using solid JS create signal. Right, so let's call this sentiment and set sentiment. Uh, this will be a string. Once again, by default, it will be empty. Right, and let's say set sentiment and we'll say sentiment word. All right, and we will return sentiment word. Right, let's save that. And we are going to go down to our return block here, all right? And instead of calling get sentiment score, we'll say process text, all right? So save, and there you have it, all right? We have neutral for our first command, okay? Positive for the second command. Right, so if we roughly scan through this, I mean, it looks positive, yeah? I mean, this is pretty straightforward neutral, yeah? Uh, usually, we will not get negative comments. Okay, this... I would say this is more neutral slash negative, yeah? But you get the idea, all right? So now that we are showing a slightly more descriptive word, Okay, let's display a random dog image that changes, right? Depending on the sentiment analysis here, right? On the right, I mean, to the left of this word, okay? So let's go back to our command component. All right, let's create what I will call sentiment to image. All right, so let's say positive, okay, assets. Okay, we're gonna 
use our image that we have previously copied in. Right, so neutral assets images uh, this will be neutral dot png and lastly we have negative all right same thing assets images negative dot png all right pretty straightforward save that all right so the reason why we are creating this is because if you have been paying attention okay this if else block here is not pretty at all right so we are doing this here to show you the comparison between doing a nested if else versus versus doing this and then okay if we go down to our return block here and do this right so let's create an image here to display okay so now we can straight away call sentiment right do image and we pass in the sentiment that we have saved in the signal previously, which will be either positive, negative, or neutral. All right. And then let's say class equals to maybe eight. Sorry, eight. Okay, that's will be 32 pixels. Uh, maybe make it a circle. Let's do rounded full. All right. And save. There we go. Okay, you can see the image appearing to the left of our sentiment analysis, right? So by doing this, okay, we do not need to do a nested if else block, uh, which is what we did here, right? The reason for that is because, okay, we are passing in the sentiment signal that we have saved here. Okay, so it's either, once again, it's either positive, neutral, or negative, all right? And then by passing either one of those three values into sentiment to image here, which, right, depending on what you pass in, we will return the link to the image that we want. Yeah, so we no longer need to do a nested if-else statement. You yeah? can just do this, which is much neater, right? So you can see on the right, the dog image changes depending on the sentiment analysis, right? Seems like we have a bug here. Let's check this out. Okay, so this is negative, right? It should return our negative image. Oh, okay. It should be set actually. Yep. Save. There we go. Okay, this is a, this is an image of a sad dog, I would say. Yeah. All right, let's zoom out a little to the original zoom all right okay so now that we have performed and added sentiment analysis to each and every comment okay we're going to add some additional touches to our app right which will be what you saw at the beginning of this video right so let's go back to home screen right so over here you can see that Right, we have a match when the query is fetching. It says loading dot dot dot. Right, so for example, if we refresh this, you can you can see a loading appear at the top. Right, so in terms of loading animation, that isn't very ideal. Right, so we're gonna add a simple loader animation. Right, so to do that, okay, let's go to our source okay components okay let's create a new folder under components let's call this loader all right and in loader we're going to create a new file called loader right dot tsx right so once again using my code snippet right loader all right okay so we have created this simple blank loader component okay and let's go back to our home screen and for our home screen instead of showing loading right let's remove that and let's plug in our loader right save okay and just to see this loader appear on the right while we make some visual changes to it okay we're gonna say is success 
right? We're going to show loader when the success here, right? Just to show it for a while, right? So rather let's comment this section, yeah? Save. Okay, so now we shouldn't see anything on the right. So let's go back to our loader and let's change the visuals for it. Right, so let's do this. Okay, we're gonna style the div here. So okay, we want the entire screen. Okay. Okay. Uh, maybe we want it somewhere at the top. So maybe some padding from the top. We want it to be in the center as well. Flex as always. And maybe flex column, All right? Okay, so for our loader, we want a simple animation. So remember at the start of this video, okay, we have already added okay, motion. So let's import that. So import, okay, we're going to use motions uh, spring. So to create and make the, the animation more interesting. All right. And of course we need motions motion. Right, from motion one. Motion one, solid, okay. So here we're gonna call motions div. Okay, and we're gonna style this as well. All right. Uh, maybe give it a background color of blue 500 using Tailwind CSS. Okay, we're gonna animate it. Okay, we're gonna rotate it by 90 degrees. Uh, give it an animation duration of 500. Right, so this is a small tip for animations. So 500 here refers to 500 ms. Okay, and for a good animation that allows your end user to notice it, okay, it has to be anything above 500 milliseconds. Right, and above, yeah. Anything below that, right, the average eye will not be able to catch it. Yeah, so make sure that your animation is always 500 ms milliseconds and above. Yeah, you can Google that out. All right, and in terms of transition, let's do easing, uh, let's use the spring that we have imported. So let's save that. Right, so you notice a small square appearing on the right. So if we refresh that, right, so notice that it kind of rotates here. So we want the loader to keep on loading, right, to keep on playing the animation. So let's do repeat, infinity and beyond. Save that and you see that it repeats nonstop. Yeah, so that is what we want, right? Okay, and let's move it slightly to the left. There we go, all right. All right, so now that we have the loader, let's go back to our home screen and let's undo the changes here. Save. Okay, if we refresh now, okay, we'll see the loader, right? Okay, but you might notice something weird that is going on here and that is Okay, even though it shows the loader, that means okay, we are still fetching. Okay, but if we check the console, the inspector now, let's go to network. Uh, let's refresh. Right, so there wasn't any error. The data seems to be fetched, but we are still stuck in the loader. And the reason for that is because okay, the border was not loaded properly. Yeah, we did not check properly. Okay, and because sometimes, okay, we also need to check for the model if we already have it, yeah? So let's do this, save. So now if we refresh and refresh and refresh, you can see that, okay, no more bugs. Okay, and to see the loader in action, we're going to throttle the network here. Maybe go to fast 3G. Alright, and let's wait for the loader to appear. There we go. 
right? So that was the loader in action, right? Let's do no throttling and let's close the inspector for now. All right. So now while the app right, does its job of retrieving comments from a video, a YouTube video that we specify in the code itself and performs sentiment analysis on the comments retrieve, right? It isn't very helpful because we are not able to specify new YouTube videos on the fly using the app itself, right? Which is why we're going to add a new component, okay, at the top, okay, for you or any user of the app to maybe enter or copy and paste a new YouTube video link, right? So let's get started. All right, we're going to create a new folder under components. Let's call this header and let's name the file as header.tsx, all right? So once again, header. Okay, we'll need a method here to extract the video ID from the YouTube video link, all right? So let's do that, okay? And we're going to style our header okay but before that okay so for example if i add a text field here for example all right save and let's go back to our home screen okay so in our home screen if we were to say at our header here the r there we go space okay uh, we need a format url for now let's do an empty arrow function save okay, you can see that okay we have our small input here okay but it's not very visually appealing all right so we're going to add some spacing okay in between our comments and maybe the top of the app all right so going back here to our home screen okay we are going to add another div okay and we're going to move the entire switch portion into it right so that we can style it as well do some tailwind magic to it right so let's do flex flex column maybe some padding from the top save right so that we have some spacing here as well all right Okay, so now we'll have to style the input view here, right? Because this is ugly, yeah? So let's go back to header. Okay, let's do, say, height 20, uh, white background, flex, flex row, okay? Uh, we want it to be always at the top, right? So even when you scroll, right, the text field will still be at the top. Okay, obviously top zero. And we want a simple border at the bottom, right? Just at the bottom. And maybe blue, say 100 and save, right? So you can see on the right, there's a small border, okay? That appeared, okay? Okay, next we need to style the input, the text input itself. Right, so class equals to, okay, we want the entire screen, uh, maybe just around 40 pixels. Okay, maybe some spacing from the top. Okay, maybe we'll make the text size bigger. So text 2XL, all right? So uh, that should do. Okay, we need to close this. Yep, save. All right, so now you can see the text input at the top all right but you might also notice the the ugly blue outline that appears when we click into it yeah so to remove that okay just use tailwind css and type outline dash none right so no more ugly outline yeah Okay, we also need a placeholder as well to make it look nicer. So let's do placeholder. Okay, let's say enter slash p. 
paste a YouTube link here. All right, save. Okay, there we go. Okay, the placeholder appearing nicely on the right here. All right, so we also want a simple animation that happens when you click on the text field here. All right, so for Tailwind, right, you can do some simple animation for that. Okay, so for example, for Tailwind, you can do animations when it is clicked on by calling focus. And we'll say maybe put some padding on the left. Save. So now if we click on this text input, right, notice that the placeholder is pushed to the right. Right, but it's not very visually appealing in terms of how this animation looks like. Right, so to fix this, okay, we will need to add a simple tailwind animation that we can add as well. Okay, we're going to add it to the input. All right, and we can do so by calling transform, all right, and transition. Okay, we can say all, which will cover the transitions for a lot of situations. And okay, okay, remember that we mentioned that for animation, make sure that it is over 500 milliseconds. So we're going to say 700 instead, right? Slightly longer. And we do not want a simple, boring, linear animation. Okay, we want it to be is in and out, safe, right? So pay attention to what happens when we click on the text input here, right? Notice that it moves, right, in a very smooth animation to the right. And when we click away, it goes back smoothly, right? So that looks much nicer yeah right next we need to be able to capture whatever was typed in the text input and call the format url method here all right so let's say on input equals to okay we have our event here so we'll call props dot format url and we'll pass in the event and get the current target for from that and the value in the text field yeah all right and we have an error there let's fix that save all right so now if we go back to home screen okay we will need to create the format url method so let's do that now all right so rnf constant format url and we'll say url which is a string okay so we'll do a simple check, right? Simple validation of the URL that is passed in. Uh, let's say let is validated equals to false. Okay. And if the URL right contains, right? We use dot index all for that, right? Contains this, which is what you usually get from a usual YouTube video link. Right, we'll say formatted equals to URL dot split. Okay, we want to remove this portion and just get the video ID behind. All right, the reason for that is because most commonly used YouTube video links look like this, right? So you just want to get this portion here, which is the video's ID, yeah, which we can use to retrieve its comments. All right. Uh, so let's clear that. Okay, now we have that. All right, now that we have this formatted video ID, okay, which we, we can get by doing this, right, formatted one, okay. Now that we have this video ID, okay, we need to go back to the store. So remember where we created in a store, okay, we have this video ID that we access from our fetch video comments in order to know which video to fetch the comments from, right? So we need to update this video ID in the store, right? So to do that, let's go back to home screen, 
right and do we have the store already called here no all right so let's call the store here okay by using a code snippet that we already have uh, this will be store and once again let's import what we are missing here from the store that we define here right okay with the video id right now that we have done that okay we can use that to set and update the store okay but in particular we just want to update the video id right and we'll say hey okay we want the video id in the store to be this new video id and that's how you can update the video id in our store okay using solid js and of course it is validated right okay and moving on so obviously if it is validated we will do a refresh using the query that we have previously caught over here which is essentially just calling the fetch video comments over here right so let's save this and let's try to paste a random youtube link on the text input here and let's see what happens all right seems like nothing is happening and that is because okay we have not added this format url to our format url that the header is required right so save that and let's refresh our app all right so now that we have added the format url to the header okay let's try to copy and paste a new youtube video link over here and see what happens all right so notice that the comments did not change so what the, this meant was that the video id was not saved properly right so let's check right so if we take a look at our network tab over here okay so if we remove this uh, let's paste again okay and we see that it is using the video id here which is the same as what we have in the store right so we can see that the video id is not being used properly by the fetch right so let's go back to our fetch video comments okay so what is going on here all right so we can see that we are calling store.video id here and creating the request here and over here we're just calling the request.video id okay but this bug occurs because the request has already been created and it is using the initial video id value stored in the store at that point in time yeah so it isn't getting the updated video id from the store right so in order to fix this okay all we have to do is just to change request to store and save right so now if we refresh the app all right and let's check our network requests again all right okay we can see that it is using the initial video id here all right that starts with l98w and so on okay but if we paste another youtube video link now right you can see that okay the comments have changed and more importantly right on the bottom right here you can see that the video id has changed all right let me just zoom that in for you all right you can see this jxsse is the new video id all right so we have fixed that bug all right so now while this seems nice and pretty and useful okay let's take a look at the network tab again all right let's go to network all right so watch what happens when we type anything into the header text view here 
Right, so notice that I typed three S's and we fired off three network requests. Yeah. So this isn't ideal as anyone can just spam your keyboard and the app will spam network requests. Right, so what we want to do here is to debounce this input. Right, so let's go back to our home screen. Right, so home screen. And let's go back to our format URL because this is what is being called whenever you type into the text field or whenever you copy and paste something into it. Right, so in order to add a simple debounce here, which is essentially only allowing this request, right, this network refresh to be called okay, after maybe a few seconds, someone has stopped typing, right? To do that, we'll say let timer. Okay, we need this. Okay, okay, we'll say timer equals to set timeout. Right. So this timeout function, okay, we'll wait say one second. Right. So it will fire off one second later after anyone has stopped typing. And of course, we need to clear it, right? We need to clear it if it already exists, right? Save that, right? So now let's check out our inspector once again in the network tab. Okay, so if we type anything now, SSS, okay, notice that it only fires one network request and it only does so one second later after we have stopped typing. Yeah. So the reason why this is happening and the reason why this works is because if we keep on typing without stopping, okay, what is happening in the app is that format URL is being caught, okay, and we get to clear timeout. So if this is being caught for the first time, right, this doesn't matter because timer ID doesn't exist, right? There's nothing in it yet, right? Okay, but once we get to this portion here, right, we'll set a timeout, right, which is essentially a delay of one second. So this is 1000 milliseconds, which is one second, right, to say, hey, let's refresh the query, right, let's get more data. Let's get data from the endpoint. Okay, but because we type again, right, this format URL will be caught again immediately. Right, so once again, we are getting to clear timeout, but this time because timer ID already has something in it, which is the previous set timeout, right, we clear it. So this, the first refresh doesn't get fired right so this happens around four times right because we type four times here yeah until the last time when we stop typing right it doesn't call it again so it doesn't clear the previous timeout which is why the query was refreshed right after we stopped for around one second yeah so i hope that explains uh, things yeah all right so as shown at the start of this video, we will also want to add okay, an overall percentage positive okay, at the top. So to give anyone who is using the app an idea of how positive or negative the video was right at the top, right? maybe directly below the text input. Right, so let's get to that. So to do that, first up, we need to go back to our store, right? And we will need an array because we will need to keep track of all the sentiments for each and every comment, right? So here, let's create sentiments. Okay, it will be a string array. And of course, we need an initial value for our sentiments, right? So it will be an empty array, right? Save that. All right, now let's go back to our comment component, right? Because this is where 
we can get the sentiment or rather each and every sentiment for our comment right so we will need to use the store here as well so once again using solid js use store right equals to store okay we need to import that as well all right so basically we want to add each sentinel word and push it to our new sentiments array in the store all right so how we do that is by calling set store once again and because we want to update sentiments okay we say sentiments all right and we say sentiments okay we want to append okay sentiments Okay, whatever new sentiment word we have here to whatever we already have in sentiments okay which is represented by s over here okay and here we'll say sentiment word right and that is how we can push each and every sentiment to our sentiments array in the store all right all right now let's go back to our home screen where we will process all the sentiments right and do a simple calculation right to arrive at our overall percentage right and we can do that in a create effect so let's say create effect right so this is provided by solid.js okay we'll do a check to say if query dot is success all right so we'll only do the calculation if we actually have any data yeah and of course if the model has loaded properly as well right so we need to check how many sentiments we have so store dot sentiments dot length right okay so the calculation will just be simply calculating how many positive comments we have out of all the comments yeah so it is quite straightforward right so let's say store dot sentiments dot for each okay for each all right and each will be a sentiment okay and we'll say if sentiment is equals to positive we'll say positive plus one if sentiment is negative we'll say negative plus one right if not uh, we'll just say neutral plus one all right okay and let's calculate the final percentage equals to the number of positive comments divided by the total number of com sentiments yeah times 100 okay and we're going to set this final percent in a signal as well right using create signal once again so let's do this uh, this will be final percent right and set final percent uh, this will be a number okay and by default it will be zero all right so back to what we have here so set final percent final percent all right so the reason why we want to save this final percent in a signal is because we want to leverage on solids solid js computed signals right so computer signals are essentially just leveraging on the existing signals that you have and doing something with them and getting something out of them yeah so okay we just want to round up our final percent to two digits right so we'll say final percent all right times 100 all right and they are by 100 right so for example if we display this rounded now okay in our return block 
Right, let me just improve the formatting here slightly. Alright. So for example, if we say, okay, let's create another div here. Okay, and let's display this rounded. Save. Okay, so now it is 65. Right, you can see this small, uh, let me zoom in on the right. Okay, you can see this 65 that appears here. All right. So watch what happens when we copy and paste another random cat video, uh, which is a totally different video from what we have here. So the comments will change, which means that the sentiments will change and the calculation for final percent will change. All right, let's place that and you can see that the number here changes, right? The rounded number here changes, right? So that is what you can leverage on computer signals. It is very powerful. I recommend you to make more use of it if you are checking out SolidJS as well, yeah? All right, so in addition to just displaying a number here, we also want to display an image, right? A random dog image once again, yeah? That depending on the percentage will change as well, right? So, okay, once again, we are using computer signals, but this time to display an image. So rounded, okay, using rounded here, if it's greater than 80%, uh, we'll say display the happy dog image, yeah, which seldom happens. If not, if it's greater than say 50%, uh, we'll say display the neutral image. If not, well, just display the sad image, yeah. Save. All right. So we will need to style this, right, this portion here in order for the dog image to appear properly, right? And of course, okay, we should not put this here because this can only be calculated when we get the data and the model loaded, right? So let's remove that, all right? And let's see where we should put. Okay, let's put a div, a new div under here. Okay, let's say because we want it to appear on top of the comments list. So let's do flex column. And this will be moving our list into it as well. All right. And for the overall percentage, we'll create another div. Okay, once again, of course, flex, uh, because we want it to display the image in a row next to the number. Let's do flex row. All right, we'll give it a simple blue background, right? BG dash blue, and maybe some rounded corners. All right. And let's display our image here. Let's say IMG source. Okay, this will be our overall image URL that we just created just now. Okay, and let's define the size of our image. We'll make it slightly bigger as compared to the rest of the images displayed for each and every command. And okay, of course we need the number percentage itself. All right. Uh, let's do rounded plus percentage positive overall and save. There we go. Okay, you can see on the right, uh, we have 68.75 percentage percent positive overall. Uh, okay, but we need some padding Okay, for this new component, right, this new section here. All right, so let's do say padding top, maybe five, same for left, uh, maybe same for the bottom and maybe some margin to the top, All right? So maybe we give it some spacing between this portion here 
and the text field at the top, right? So it looks much, much cleaner. Yeah. All right. So now let's take a look at the app again. So if we refresh this, okay, it seems to retrieve the comments properly. Uh, seems to do the sentiment analysis, showing the image, and of course calculating the overall percentage, right? For how many positive comments there are, and when we copy and paste another YouTube link here, seems like it also retrieves the comments for that new video as well. So, so it seems to be performing nicely. Okay, but watch what happens when we remove this arrow here. Alright, so you might notice that the loader is appearing and just spinning constantly until it disappears. Right, so what is happening? Alright, so let's take a look at the inspector and you can not notice that in the console right it says filter to load resource right server responded with a status of 404 right so it really tries a few times until it throws an error okay so let's take a look at our network okay so okay for this we'll have to repeat what we did just now right you can see at the bottom Okay, the arrows are coming in, right? And, right, so YouTube is telling us the video identified by the code parameter could not be found, right? So we also need to cater for this situation, right? So in order to do that, right? So luckily for us, right, luckily for us, okay, let's refresh that. So luckily for us, solid query does provide query dot is error right so whenever we have an error we can say error fetching for example all right so save that and let's copy and paste that the youtube li video link and remove the character here and we should see error fetching appear here right so Obviously, this is not visually appealing once again. So we are going to create another component for this, right? So once again, under components, we're going to create a new folder. Let's call this error. And under error, let's create a new component. Uh, let's call this error message.tsx, right? So error message, all right? And of course, we need to pass in the error message itself, which is a string, all right? And we're just going to style this nicely, yeah? Okay, let's remove that. Uh, let's do class equals to flex. Okay, so if you recall what we showed at the start of this video, okay, it was a simple text with an image of a dog looking very sad. So we want to display the items one above each other, which is why we are using flex column here, right? And some padding from the top, and we'll have the text in gray, all right? All right, and we want to display the arrow message here. Okay, let's save this and see what it looks like now if we plug it in over here. So we'll say error message. And of course, we need to pass in the message. So error message equals to, okay, okay, let's see. Maybe we'll say something simple and straightforward. There was an error retrieving this video's comments okay let's use double quotes for our string instead yep right save right you can see the text right the error displaying okay now we also want to display 
an image of the said dog as well. So let's do that, right? So let's say div class. Okay. You know what? Let's do image src. Right? Uh, we'll use our assets, images, and the last remaining image that we have not used yet, which is set in rain.png. Right? And let's do some simple styling for it. Uh, so if we save this now, okay, we should see this unhappy or sad looking dog right, looking out the window on a rainy day. Right? And let's say create some rounded corners, save. And of course we need some spacing okay, from the top. Okay, I'm just going to type another message here to say uh, it's a set day indeed safe, right? And let's do some simple styling for this. I uh, will say some simple padding and maybe move it up slightly so that we can identify it with the text here instead. Yeah, so this will be our error message right so once again to test that this error message appears during an error fetching okay we're going to refresh this paste a valid youtube link okay and remove maybe the six all right and then loader will appear for a while okay it's doing the fetching in the background and the error appears. Nice. All right. So now that the app seems ready to be deployed, okay, we're going to use GitHub and Vercel to deploy. So let's jump over to GitHub. Okay. All right. So make sure before continuing with this, okay, make sure you have created a GitHub account if you do not already have one. All right. So go to github.com slash new. Let me just zoom in that for you. All right. Okay, where well, we can create a new GitHub uh, repo. All right. Okay, if you want it to be public or private, that is up to you. Okay, but for us, we're going to create our repo now. All right, we're going to call this solid dash YouTube dash sentiment. All right. Okay, and we're going to put it as public. And let's create a repo now. Okay, so this is what you should see once GitHub creates the repo for you. And just follow the steps here, which is what we're going to do now with our terminal. So let's jump over there. All right, we're back at our terminal. All right, so if we do a git status now, okay, we'll see that right, our terminal is telling, that, telling us that this is not a git repo yet. So let's do git init. Okay. Uh, let's clear that clear and let's do git commit uh this is our commit message let's do first commit all right uh git add as well okay and of course we need uh let me just clear that so you can see what we are typing here okay uh, let's clear that okay so let's do git branch m all right, so that will be our main branch. And let's do git remote at origin. Okay, this will be the link to our git repo that we have just created. Okay, so it will be solid dash YouTube dash sentiment dot git. And lastly, we just need to push it. So git push dash u original main. So let's wait for that to push to our git repo. Okay, that was fast. Okay, let's go back to our GitHub and check out the changes. All right, so now we're back at GitHub and let's refresh this and we should see our code being pushed or pushed to our repo here. All right, so moving on to the next step. Okay, we need to go to Vercel over here 
So once again, make sure that you have created an account with a cell if you have not already done so yet. Okay, but once again, go to vercel.com slash new, right? N-E-W, right? As simple as that. Okay, where we will create or rather import, right? The Git repo, the GitHub repo that we just created, right? So click on continue with GitHub, right? Click on that. And in order to link and have the app on Vercel, okay, we need to link our newly created GitHub wrapper to our Vercel account here. So over here, click on adjust GitHub app, app permissions, all right? And GitHub will prompt you to enter your password, do so. Right, once you have entered your password, this is what you might see. Scroll down and I mean, this is up to you, but usually I'll go for only select repos that you want to be on Vercel, right? So we'll say solid-youtube-sentiment, right? Save here, right? So you can see that this is updated here. We'll say import. Right, so here you can configure the settings, the various configurations for this new project on Vercel, but we're just going to stick with the defaults for now. Right, and okay, click on this deploy button. Right, wait for Vercel to do its own thing. All right, so that took a while. Well, not actually very long, but Vercel has managed to build our app. So now if we continue to our dashboard for our solid-youtube-sentinel app, okay, we can copy the link address here and let's see what it looks like. Okay, on Vercel, uh, let's paste that here. Okay, you can see that we have our YouTube comments being loaded, our sentiment analysis being performed. And let's copy and paste another YouTube video here to see if it's working properly in retrieving the new comments. It is. And of course, we have to test for the error as well. Okay, the loader is spinning. And we should see the sad dog soon. There we go, right? So even the error is properly functioning. So once again, and as always, the code for this app will be on GitHub for free, right? I will put the link in the description box below and in the top pin comment, right? So if you find this video helpful, right, do remember to subscribe and ring that notification bell, right? Do not miss out on any of our future new videos right and of course if you have any interesting ideas or tech that you want me to check out as well uh, share your ideas in the comments below and as always stay awesome and stay safe everyone and do look forward to our new videos soon cheers man